Hey guys, so we're going into graphing some trig functions. We're going to start out with sine and cosine. Now, if you are in the regular class, we are going to divide this up into two days. So pay attention to when I say, okay, if you're in the regular class or in secondary three, stop the video now and start practicing some of your graphing. If you are in the honors, you are going to watch the whole thing. Okay. So first of all, these are the graphs of sine and cosine. Uh, specifically right at first we're going to pay attention to sign because that is where secondary three is going to focus on today and then I'll come back to cosine where the honors can pick up on cosine. So what I want to do is match this graph above because this is our parent function of sign with what we learned in our unit circle. So in our unit circle, if you get out your unit circle right now, remember sine was your second value in the coordinate, correct? So if we look at zero right now, what would be the coordinate of sine? It would be zero. And pi over two, what would that be? Well, if you look at your unit circle, pi over two, we would be at one. At pi, we would be at zero. At three pi over two, we would be down here, which would be negative one. And completing our whole circle, we would be at zero. And what happens, guys, if we keep going around and around in the circle, what happens? This keeps repeating. Zero, one, zero, negative one, zero, one, zero, so on and so forth. So the graph what happens is the graph then repeats and it becomes a wave. So I'm going to show you right now that this is a single period. A single period is where our graph does a full rotation, like on the unit circle. And in the graph part, it won't repeat. That's when it starts to repeat. So if you look at zero, which is our y-axis, two to pi right here, we see we have an up wave and down wave, and then it would keep repeating, okay? This is going to help us with our transformations of that parent function, because this is what we always start with when we talk about sine. So since I'm going to relate this to transformations, let's review a couple of things. What do each of these values, A, B, C, and D, do to our parent function? Well, if we look at this, if you remember, the easiest one to look at is D, right? Because D moves it up or down. Remember, up was our positive and down was our negative. Now, with graphing a trig function, we are going to call this a vertical shift. What helps us with that is in our big function, this also indicates where the midline is going to be. Now, if you go back on top, the midline is again, what you think, it's, it's the middle, right? So as you can see, I can cut this in half and there would be my midline. So that vertical shift really moves that midline and tells us where it's at. All right, the next one will happen down. The next one wouldn't be easiest left and right. But if you remember correctly, we have to do the opposite on the inside. So left is actually the addition and right is the subtraction. So this is a horizontal shift. With our trig functions, this is what we call a phase shift. So think of our period right there. Remember the period was where it did a full rotation and then it would start repeating. Well, we'll take that period and shift it over. All right, let's go to A. Now remember A 
does our vertical excuse me guys stretch or shrink I can spell and then it also remember if it's negative it reflects it so remember it flips it Okay, this, what this stretch does or shrink does is it changes the amplitude. Okay, so what does amplitude mean? Well, amplitude is the distance from the midline to the max height or the min height. That's what that does. It stretches it or it shrinks it. Okay, because usually our amplitude for a parent function is one. So that's what they mean by amplitude. Now B does a horizontal stretch. Or shrink. Sorry guys, my nose is running. Now what does that mean? Well, horizontal stretch or shrink, what that does is it changes the period. So remember in our parent function, our full period is zero to two pi, right? And then it starts repeating. Well, we can shrink that and make more rotations within that two pi, or we can stretch it where it takes more than two pi to make a full on rotation. Now, here's that vocabulary for the trig functions, or at least that and cosine. Let's get that straight there. Amplitude is half the different, half the diff the distance from the max to the min, okay? Now to find our period to see if there's a shrink or stretch, what we do is we take two pi and we divide by B and that's how long the cycle is. So how long it takes for that wave to repeat. These are little things that help you start graphing. Sine starts at the middle and cosine starts at the top. But what we're going to do is actually do transformations from the parent function to see if this makes it a little bit easier. And the midline is a horizontal line that cuts the function in half. So that's K. That's what happens at the very end. Okay, so that's like our D. So let's see if we can do some of these now. Remember, we're going to focus on sign right now. So what I'm going to do is indicate which each of these things are at this moment. So remember, the midline comes from K or from our transformations, which is D. So our midline is negative 1. So we're going down 1. Our amplitude comes from what's at uh out front, right? So remember, that's the absolute value though, because amplitude is a distance. It is not the actual number, it's the distance, it's the absolute value. So the amplitude is two. Remember, that's the height from the midline to the maximum. And, and the period, if you remember from the front, it says it's two pi over b, the absolute value of b, which in b in this case is what's in front of x. So for you, 2 pi over b. So it's 2 pi over 2 pi, which is the value of 1. All right, we're going to relate this to transformations. So of course, when we do transformations, we're always going to put our parent function first. Let's remember that we're doing sine, because in the future, when you go back and forth, you need to remember that you're dealing with 
with what parent function. So x will always start with first sine and cosine 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. Because that is a full cycle or a period for the parent function. Now I'm going to write down what we did on the front page, which was when x is 0, y is 0. When x is pi over 2, y is 1. When pi, when x is pi, y is 0. When x is 3 pi over 2, y is negative 1. And at 2 pi, it's 0. OK, so now we're going to do our transformations. Everything on the outside is done to y. And you go from left to right. And everything on the inside is done to x, but we got to think of doing the opposite. So let's do our y values first, since we don't have to think of the opposite. So on the outside here, we are dealing with the 2 and the negative 1. And I just said, make sure you do it from left to right. So the first thing we're going to do to y is multiply it by 2. So 0, 2, 0, negative 2, and 0. And then we're going to subtract 1. So 0 minus 1 is negative 1. 2 minus 1 is 1. 0 minus negative 1 is negative 1. Negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3. And 0 minus 1 is negative 1. Remember, these are the y values of our coordinates at the very end here. Now, our x value. Our x value, well, we have to do this 2 pi, right? It's multiplying by 2 pi, but when it's on the inside, we have to think of the opposite. So we're going to divide by 2 pi. Divide by 2 pi. Well, 0 divided by 2 pi is still 0. Pi over 2 divided by 2 pi. So on the side, I want you guys to think of this. Pi over 2 divided by 2 pi. Well, when we divide, it's the same thing as multiplying by its reciprocal. So what happens here? Well, the pi's cancel. And 1 over 2 times 2, well, 2 times 2 is 4. So that is 1 fourth. 2 pi, let's see, pi divided by 2 pi. Well, again, I'll do it on the top so you guys can see that. Pi divided by 2 pi. Well, what happens? The pi's cancel, and we're left with 1 half. Okay, let's do our next one. 3 pi over 2. I'm going to take what I learned over here, which is multiplying by the reciprocal. And look, our pi's cancel, and we're left with 3 over 4. And 2 pi divided by 2 pi is, of course, the value of 1. So what we're going to do now is we're going to graph and see if all these things happen from our parent function. I'm also going to space this graph out and not use every single uh, squares as our coordinate. Okay. So what I'm going to do is actually label it by this, but space it out evenly. So of course this is zero, right? I'm gonna put one fourth right here. And every two, I'm gonna put the next value. Think of this, one quarter, two quarters, three quarters, four quarters. There we go. Now, I'm going to take a different color so I can see the difference. I'm going to plot my points. I'm also going to put 
Um, let me go back to the green. I'm going to put the Y values down, right? So let's do one, two, three. Yeah, let's do every one for there. So this is one, this is negative one, negative two, and negative three. Okay. Because of course we can stretch our graph however we want based on our units. So zero, negative one, one fourth, one, one half negative one, three fourths negative three, so one, two, three, and one negative one. Let's put that all together. Now I'm going to prove to you that we just made our graph. Okay, remember that halfway is the midline. Well, let's see where the halfway is. It's right there, right? Well, what value is that at? That's at negative one. Didn't we say that? The amplitude, which is the height from the midline to the top and the bottom should be two. Let's check. This is the midline, so one, two. There you go. One, two. Awesome. And this full rotation stops at one. I always check here. When I multiply or divide by the x value, I can check that this final value is the period. And we are all done. We just graph sign. Let's try it again. OK. Midline, where does that come from? Remember, that's our k slash our d. So it looks like it's a positive 3. So we're going up. Three. Now remember the amplitude is the absolute value of five, which is five. But I also think since it's a negative, it's gonna flip. So I should see a flip in there, right? And then the period, remember is two pi divided by B, which is two pi divided by half. Well, let me show you this math. Remember, dividing is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. The reciprocal of one half is two. So that means our period is four pi. So that whole thing is going from zero to four pi. All right, let's make our table to show me that transformation. This is still sine. So zero pi over two pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi. Now, guys, you can always refer back to your notes to find out the parent function's actual values. So for sine, it's 0, 1, 0, negative 1, and 0. Let's do what is happening to the y first, because I feel that's easier. So we have this negative 5 and this 3. Go left to right. So we're going to multiply by the negative 5. Don't think of subtraction, because what is it doing to sign? It's multiplying. So 0, negative 5, 0, positive 5, and 0. And we have the plus 3. So I'm going to add 3 to everything. Negative 5 plus 3 is negative 2. 3, 8. Ooh, that's getting high. And then 3. So there's our y values. Let's look at our x's. So this is multiplying by 1 half. So we should be doing the opposite, which is dividing 1 half. Now I'm going to write it down here, but I'm also going to put something else to make that multiple. Make that um, operation easier. Dividing by fraction is the same thing as multiplying by its reciprocal, right? So this is easier to think of because now we just have to multiply each of these by two. So zero. Now when I multiply this by two, the twos cancel, giving us pi. Multiply this by two, we get two pi. Multiply this by 2, our 2's cancel, giving us 
three pi multiplying this by two gives us four pi. And what did I say at the end or at the end of the other one? When we multiply or divide, that ending point should be our period. And what do you know it is? Let's do some graphing. Okay, I need to make sure I get to eight. So I'm going to count ahead of time to make sure it's on my graph. So let's make eight here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then technically zero, right? Is that giving me everything? I think so. Okay. Now, 4 pi, right? So I'm going to go, there's 0. The next one's pi, 2 pi. And remember, I'm skipping everyone here. So 3 pi, 4 pi. Now, by even, evenly um, spacing these, all the graphs will kind of look the same. But if we all put them on the same graph with the same spacing, you would see that actual smush or shrink and stretch. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we have to go down to negative two. Okay. Now I'm gonna graph. So I'm gonna graph the outer coordinates, so zero and three. pi and negative 2, 2 pi and 3, 3 pi and 8, 4 pi and 3. Okay, I'm going to connect those. And then let's make sure that everything connects to my transformations. So first of all, I see a flip there. Did I flip it? Yeah, because remember the parent function starts up and then goes down. So we did flip it. Let's look at that midline. Okay, halfway is right here. What value on the y value is that? One, two, three. Oh, up three. That's awesome. That's good. Okay. From the midline to the max, how many do we have? One, two, three, four, five. Ooh, that's good. It was five, right? Let's check our min. One, two, three, four, five. And our period's four pi. And we're done. If you are in secondary three, please stop the video now and do some practice. If you are in honors, please go back to the first page so we can discuss our cosine. All right, let's go back to the first page here and talk about cosine. So as we can see with cosine, we're still using the same vocabulary, okay? Now, the only difference is I want you guys to see that in sine, when we started, we started at the midline. Do you guys see that? For our period being from zero to pi, two pi, um, we started at the midline. But if we look at cosine and we start at zero to two pi, we start above, we start at the max. Okay, so even though here we look like a nice little wave going up and then down, our cosine almost looks like a val valley because we start down, we go up and we go we start out, we go down, and we go up again, and then it starts repeating over and over. So same situation, we're just starting in a different, in a different spot, which that means there's a connection. So remember with sign, we talked about phase shift, but yet I didn't do phase shift yet in the first part of the video, right, with sign, because I wasn't going to do phase shift for now. But if you look, I can actually move it over, start at the midline here, and stop at the midline, and look, it's a sine graph now, because there's a connection with sine and cosine. When we eventually work backwards, you could make it sine or cosine. So in your problem, it will ask you, make a sine function, make a cosine, because they connect. Cosine is a type of sine wave. 
So let's go back to our unit circle and look at what our parent function would look at. So at cosine is what value of our coordinate pair? It's our x value. Did I say x over here? Because it was y. Ah, goodness. So it's the first part of the coordinate, right? Okay. So let's look at zero on our unit circle right now. Okay. It's right over here. The coordinate in the x value is 1. If you go to pi over 2, the first coordinate is 0. If we go to pi, the x coordinate is negative 1. If we go to 3 pi over 2, it's 0. We connect all the way for our full circle, and we're back at 1. So when we do cosine values, guys, we're going to use 1, 0, negative 1, 0, and 1. So go to your last page there, and we are actually going to look at some cosine graph. So I want you guys to see here, if you go to example 1 and 2, you'll find that these are the same functions, but now we're dealing with cosine instead of sine. So we actually can take our midline like we did in example one and put it down here. So we don't have to do that math. Amplitude is two. In our period, do you remember if you go back to the other page, we had two pi divided by two pi, which is the value of one. And that came from two pi over two pi. All right, now when we do our parent function though, we're still doing the x values of zero, pi halves, pi, three pi halves, and two pi. But our y values are different. Remember this is cosine, so it goes one, zero, negative one, zero, one. So remember, you can always refer back to these two tables when going back and forth. All right, let's look at our outside values here. So we have a two and a negative one. We have to do left to right. So we're gonna multiply by two. So two, zero, negative two, zero, and two. And then we're gonna subtract one. So I get one, negative one, negative three, negative one, and one. Okay, the great thing about our example on the first page, or second page there, the example one, is our y values, it still happens to be the same. So we are dividing by two pi, because remember, we do the opposite of what we see on the inside. In the inside here, we multiply by two pi, but we're dividing by two pi. When we divide by 2 pi, I'm going to do this math quickly because you guys can go back to the sign to see that. We get 0, 1 fourth, 1 half, excuse me, 3 fourths, and 1. And remember, there is our period right there. Now let's graph this. I'm going to space it out again. So I get one fourth, one half, three fourths, and one. And we're going to one and negative three. Okay, watch your coordinates here. The first one is zero, one. So this is a good start, right? Because remember, cosine starts on top. One fourth, negative one. One half, negative three. Three fourths, negative one. And one, one. Remember, we talked about at the beginning of cosine that the cosine was a valley. And what do you know? There's our valley. Let's look at that midline again. Remember, right in the middle, which is right there, is negative 1. 
that helps. Um, from our midpoint to the highest point, we're at two. Same thing with our min, we're at two. That was correct. And our full period there is at one. Awesome. Okay, let's try one more. As you can see, example four is the same setup as example two, but we cosine it instead of sine. So our min line is still up three. Our amplitude is still five, but remember there's a flip. And our period, which is two pi divided by b, comes out to four pi. Again, I went through this quickly because I did this all through sign. So if you have to rewind the video and look over those calculations from sign. Okay, parent functions, zero, pi over two, pi, three pi over two, two pi. Okay, this is cosine, so remember our coordinates for our y values, which is one, zero, negative one, zero, and one. Okay, so our stuff that we're doing on the y value is we're going to multiply by negative 5. Negative 5, 0, 5, 0, negative 5. And then we add 3. So we get negative 2, 3, 8, 0. Oh, not 0. I forgot to add 3. And negative two. And then remember here, we're multiplying by two. Because we divide by the one half, we do the opposite, right? We divide by one half. But dividing by a fraction is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. Again, you can look that over in example two if we had to. So zero pi, two pi, three pi. And what do you know? Four pi, there is our period. That's awesome. Let's graph. Let's see if I remember the spacing like I did on example two. Okay, uh, let's do our x values. It's zero pi, two pi, 3 pi, 4 pi. So we have a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, all the way down to negative 2. Okay. At 0, it's negative 2. At pi, it's 1, 2, 3. At 2 pi, it's 8. At 3 pi, it's 3. At 4 pi, it's negative 2. Uh-oh, I didn't get that valley, right? Instead, I got this hill. But wait, I'm supposed to flip it, right? That's what's supposed to happen. If we flip this hill, it becomes a valley so we're all good so on cosine it's a valley but when we have a negative cosine it flips through a hill so that's great now let's look at our midpoint our min our midline midlines right here which is at the value of three yes and then we go up one two three four five five to our max one two three four five five to our min, so that's great. Amplitude's awesome. And then we start repeating our hill in this case, right? Um, every four pi. Awesome. Now we are going with cosine. So I want you guys to practice uh, doing some sine and cosine. <laughs> 